Hello everyone and welcome to part one of the test of my alternate Artemis program mission sequence. Having introduced the Kumo lander in a previous video, I've decided that we should run through the full test of it, meaning that we are going to first have to build Lunar Gateway and dock the two modules of the lander to Lunar Gateway and then proceed with the mission for landing after that. And so we begin with the launch of the Lunar Gateway modules, and the first two are launched on Falcon Heavy. That's why we have it here. Though technically this mission isn't part of the mission list uh, for Artemis. Uh, it is obviously very necessary for the Artemis program because Artemis 4 is going to uh, have module to this, the IHAB module. And that will be launched by SLS Block 1B unless they change that. And so we'll be doing that as well. But we have to launch this first, otherwise it can't do that. Now, obviously, in testing this lander, I'm not going to be doing the Lunar Starship landings or anything like that. So it's just basically uh, launching Lunar Gateway over there and then docking the IHAB module. And then we are going to send over the lander and dock the two pieces together and then land on the moon and then hopefully get into shape for reuse and maybe a setup an ISRU unit eventually. So just going through that sort of setup and as an extra challenge we are doing that in a install with Principia. So the main, uh, probably the most difficult thing is dealing with Principia which is introducing n-body physics into Kerbal Space Program. This is Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with realism overhaul and so other than that uh, I don't think there's any big surprises as to what I'm doing here. Uh, Principia is going to be tricky and otherwise it's just Delta V management. So here we have the gateway modules that I had previously made. Um, why the food, water, and oxygen is so low, I have no idea. We should have all the um, lithium hydroxide as well. Uh, now. I am not going to be able to put Lunar Gateway into orbit around the moon the way NASA would. And in particular, I don't know why I have double modules there, but that shouldn't cause a problem. Uh, in particular, they would use a lot of ion engine burns and it would take a while to actually get into orbit around the moon. And I don't have that kind of patience or ability to calculate those kinds of orbits. Uh, taking a look, this has three years worth of propellant. It's not going to take all of it in order to get over there, but these are the ion engines on here are presumably correct. Um, I looked this stuff up. They have a minuscule amount of thrust, 13 kilowatts of power to power them, those huge solar panels. So, yeah, it's. I'm not going to be able to do it the way that NASA does it. I'm going to have to do it with the hydrazine. And so we're going to have to sort of trade off the xenon gas for more hydrazine so that we can use the RCS thrusters to get into orbit. So that's one concession that I'm going to make. And so what I'm going to do is dump half the xenon gas. Now keeping in mind the mass of this is supposed to be 14.238 uh, tons. We'll make sure that we don't go over that with the hydrazine. There we go, 14.238 tons as specified. So I'm only loading up half the amount of xenon gas that it should have and exchanging instead for hydrazine so that we can make sure to use the RCS thrusters to capture. And so that is, that is one little cheat if you will. Now there's the whole business of it staying in orbit around the moon despite Principia probably wanting to throw it into weird orbits because of n-body physics. So we're going to try and get it into the right orbit but hopefully it can stay there so we can proceed with our operations. This is the first time I'm going to be trying to do extended operations with Principia. You know having to wait a while and you know possibly months or years. I mean actually the mission sequence for Artemis we're talking about a year between the stuff or more, so yeah. It's, uh, will it stay in orbit? Well, that is part of what we're going to test. So anyway, we are going to launch this to the moon and see how it goes. Okay, well, here at Pad 39A, I have it set up for the space shuttle in this install, so uh, forgive me, we are going like this. I'm not gonna remove that stuff, but it's not collidable anyway. It's a fixture, Kerbal Constructs fixture, 
in the location. Before anybody asks, I've got Cape Canaveral HD. That's the mod that adds the nice scenery. Um, this model is from real, la real launch sites from way back when, uh, though it's probably not compatible these days. And um, the, the Falcon 9 rocket, the Falcon Heavy rocket, is from KK Launchers back. And the Gateway model is my own model. So that is what we've got here right now. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. And eventually I'll have to throttle down the core. We've got that option. It's got a lot of thrust weight ratio at the start. It's a little bit choppy though. Well, we might as well throttle down the core now. So I will reserve the propellant for the boosters to potentially return to a drone ship, but I'm not actually going to be doing the drone ship recovery. That is, uh, that is still beyond me, let's just say that. Okay, about 15 seconds worth should be fine. And off they go, and let's get this back up here. So we will throttle down the main throttle. Now, according to Wikipedia, uh, the Lunar Gateway is supposed to be at a periapsis over the North Pole and its apoapsis over the South Pole. The periapsis being about 1,500 to 3,000 kilometers and the apoapsis being 70,000 kilometers or so. It's technically a near rectilinear halo orbit, but I have no idea how to do that. So, uh, we are going to go into that orbit that I just said, with the periapsis and apoapsis, and hope it all works out. That is, that is what I'm going to do. Well, this has a lot of stuff going on, but actually that should work out for us. Yeah, that's just fine. I wanted to get rid of the bearings anyway. I mean, to some extent I'm trying out NASA's plan here, of course, with the Lunar Gateway, Orion, and all that business, but to another extent I'm introducing my own element to this, my own little lander, and seeing if it works out with their plan, you know, with SLS is it a viable option? No, oh, I think I forgot the antennae on the on the Halo module. I have those, but I didn't put them on. The model actually has uh, this bit and that bit covered up because I wasn't anticipating on actually putting docking ports on those sides, but well, turns out that we might want the docking ports on those sides, so we now have the little docking ports even though it looks like we ought not to have. Now in game right now I've launched this on April 15th 2001 so we're a little bit ahead of time. I didn't get that timing right per se. But we'll try and get the spacing of things out as well as we can. I'll, I'll save the deployment for later. Let's do the fun plotting with Principia. Well, I think that's already our target. Anyway, Mio. I see it's sort of going polar, but it looks like the wrong pole. Indeed. Uh, yes, this is this is over the south pole. I mean, not really exactly. Uh, perhaps we have picked the wrong time of month, actually. But we'll go with this, so that's a little bit off. But uh, yeah, okay, but we want to be on the opposite side. I'm guessing that's probably not an option at this stage. I think we'll just go with this for now and do a mid-course correction to deal with that. Okay, so that'll be our start. I put some supplementary RCS on here because the nitrogen doesn't always work. Actually, reading the details, it looks like in addition to the ion thrusters that we have on it. It has an additional four six kilowatt Hall effect thrusters, so 
There's the two that we have here and then four other ones. It actually has about double the ion engine power. And ignition. Here come the orbits. Yeah, okay, okay, well, close enough. I guess we want it to be sufficiently polar. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll just do a mid-course adjustment to move it over to the opposite side. We'll capture low initially and then move it up once we get to Apoapsis. Well, it looks like it has a lot of Delta V, but of course, that would have been with the ion engines. We have to use RCS here. So here we go. RCS ISP 240 with Hydrazine. Okay, well, we have a periapsis on the opposite side here. Let's uh, just delete that plan. Rebase. And that's pretty good. I have no issue with that. And it looks like we're stable. Let's go. Well, let's start rolling again. Rolling our way to the moon here. Well, I guess we can use the ion engines as well. They're not going to do anything uh, in the time frame we're talking about, but hey, why not? Um, yeah, sure. I still have to hold down H to use the RCS thrusters, though. And fizz warp. A lot. Now we can't trust the apoapsis down there, so we have to watch it over here. I suppose they probably wouldn't send the food along with it. After all, it'd have to stay there for a long time before the crew got, got there, so maybe the crew would bring their food. I'm sure there would be area to store it, but... I mean... Yes, canned food can work for an extended period of time. I'm sure NASA has the technology and everything, but I don't know if it's a good idea to leave food there. We've already passed periapsis by quite a lot. I should have started this earlier. Yeah, I'm gonna say this capture definitely did not go as intended here. Okay, come on. Capture. Sort of. In a weird halo-ish orbit capture. Um, I don't think that was actually anything useful there. Uh, so many undulations. Oh, 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 I think things are happening here now. Oh, it's sort of getting wrapped around the moon. Okay, okay, let's see, let's see. Um, can you imagine rendezvousing with this? Uh, that's 61, that's already too low. Over there. Um, hmm. That's the next one, though. Okay. Oh, all right. We'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> there. There's our orbit around the moon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, no, but, but that, this is why we have to lift the, the periapsis up. We can't have the periapsis this low, otherwise it gets all... It looks like some very fancy signature. Actually, the periapsis is already too high. Shoot. Uh, but that's what that says. The, and we don't trust that. But what do we trust? Where is... do we have any periapsis here? Periapsis is super high there. Um, so I guess we should go retrograde here. It's so confusing. I was expecting to be low over the moon on our periapsis, but... It doesn't seem like it. And that's the soonest periapsis right there. 
and it's 16,000. But you can see the problem here. You can see why we have to do this test and try to understand this. You can see why this is not trivial. I'm trying to simplify this here for now. But yeah, I mean, it's still looking like that right now. We're nearly down to the amount of hydrazine that's supposed to have loaded. It's supposed to have one ton. Is, does it look orderly in some reference frame? frame? Um, Moon-centered inertial is not bad. Doesn't look too bad in moon-centered inertial. The, the periapses keep going up and we can't keep correcting that. Moon-centered inertial also doesn't necessarily seem to make a whole lot of sense to me right now. Our speed is going up here. We haven't gotten to apoapsis, but we're pulling our periapsis down. We should be slowing down into apoapsis, if our peri especially if our periapsis is going down, right? I mean, we're pointing retrograde in the MCMF frame, but we're not retrograde in MCI. It's weird. And MCI at least has loops sort of in, sort of in a plane with each other, which is comforting. Yeah, as opposed to that, right? In one part they said 1,500 kilometers, and in another part they said 3,000. I'm going to go for 1,500 because it's lifting my apoapsis up to closer to where we're at right now. I, I do wonder if mass concentrations around the moon would make a difference and whether it's simulated or not here. Okay, well, let's go to periapsis and boost the apoapsis up and maybe that'll help. I definitely don't want the next periapsis to be that high. MCMF says prograde vector is here. We're going pretty fast, so it shouldn't be too different from inertial, right? Okay, that, that at least makes sense. Oh, we get ejected. Okay, yeah, that's not good. That, <laughs> that went from a bad rendezvous situation to a worse rendezvous situation. Um, let's just pull it lower. I have no idea what to do otherwise. But they did say that the apoapsis got as high as 70,000 kilo 70, kilometers. Doesn't mean it's always there. But this is ridiculous. No, it's still getting flung out there. Okay, well this is this is pretty tight. <laughs> Here, let's see, more... Oh, there, okay. So now, for for a very long period of time, let, let's even make more, okay. Uh, is there a amount where it stops going out there? Okay, here, R RCS off. Okay, so, like, I see no crashing indicator. I see lots of nice little periapses. Lots of nice little apoapses. It's all bundled up around the moon. So we're safe for now. <laughs> oh no. It's only like 100 days, mind you. And it's still wobbling in the estimate there. Even though I turned RCS off, I haven't, I haven't got anything that's supposed to be producing any thrust. Lunar Gateway, folks. Um, yeah. I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. <laughs> so, the station keeping is going to be interesting. I don't, I mean, I guess this, this is our station. Uh, we need to keep it somehow. So, next episode, we are going to figure out our next video. It is not meant to be a very long series. It's just, yeah. 
it's looking like it might be a little bit longer than I expected. But yeah, we just need to attach a habitat module. I have module to this and we will bring it with SLS block 1B and Orion dock it over there. And maybe that'll work out, maybe it won't. We'll find out in the next video. Even I don't know whether I can rendezvous with this. Hmm. Especially if Orion is the thing that is producing the rendezvous Delta V. Should be interesting. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.